Okay, well, very good. Thank you all for uh, joining our uh, weekly uh, SCDP update call. Uh, we have a very robust agenda as usual since we've started moving these calls to once a week, uh, but we're very lucky. We actually have a couple of speakers today uh, that I think uh, are very, very important, uh, and we wanted to be able to uh, introduce them uh, to you. Um, I'm gonna start out with a, a late edition uh, that uh, just uh, came online, and, and I really want to thank her, uh, Carrie Dillon, uh, from the Unemployment Insurance Agency uh, at, at the state of Michigan. Um, uh, I know uh, how busy you are right now, uh, but obviously issues with unemployment, uh, issues with uh, work share, things of that nature are very, very top of mind uh, for a lot of businesses and organizations here in Chiawassee County. So we were actually able to add Carrie uh, at the last minute, and we appreciate Carrie for taking a few minutes to jump on uh, and give us all an update on what's happening at UIA and work here. Uh, and then she will be available uh, to answer uh, specific questions uh, afterward as well. So, uh, Carrie, I'd like to uh, uh, turn it over to you. Um, the floor is yours to uh, to talk about anything you'd like. Uh, so, Carrie Dillon from the UIA. Carrie. And Carrie, I, this is somebody who's going to try to unmute you. I think you're going to have to do it on your end. There right. you go. Good, good morning, there. all. Thank you you're again good. for allowing yep. me to um, to join your membership meeting this morning. And um, as you all are aware, UI is extremely busy. We're in the spotlight for uh, the good and the bad. Um, and I think that's just probably part of the program when we get ready to assist people who lose their job through no fault of their own or who, who um, need help and just cannot get through. So as of uh, probably most recently, we paid out probably over $20 billion worth of unemployment benefits for nearly 2 million people in the state of Michigan. Um, we... Um, I mean, it's no secret. We have a very, very high volume of work at this time. We are certainly encouraging all employers. Um, if you're protesting, if you are needing information to get to us, uh, we're literally, um, I mean, due to the historic volumes of work that we have and the way people are used to, we still have the folks that still like to mail in fax. And honestly, we are, we're in June. So we are at the almost at the end of August now. So we are still into June trying to process all our paperwork that's still coming through. So I would honestly encourage everyone that's on the phone. Um, if you're an employer, you have info to get to us, utilize the MyWAM account the best that you can to get us information. If not, um, certainly. Um, they might get mad, but I don't mind if you email because I certainly want to make sure that we get your information in a timely fashion. Um, WorkShare. WorkShare, um, we just finished our first batch of the, um, the uh, federal government for the CARES Act. The $600 did end on 725 of 20. Um, as you all are probably aware, the FEMA Governor Gretchen Wils Whitmer had um, requested some info from FEMA to be approved for an extra $300 a week. Still, for all the folks that are still currently unemployed or underemployed, or, and I'm assuming it will take care of also the work share, um, those plans are in the very early stages. Once we get approved, we have to go through the process within our own UI system which is we have to create new procedures for our own internal staff. We also have to um, make sure that we're, when we get ready to program that, you know, the money's coming from, or, you know, being charged to the appropriate pot, if you want to call it. And so that stuff is probably going to take a little bit longer. Um, I can't really speak too much more to that, just that we've been approved and now we're going to go through the process of procedure and then programming, and then it'll be publicized on if it's going to be retroactivated to the week of 8-1. So just like with the CARES Act and the 600, it was retroactivated. Um, so I just assume, I mean, I guess I shouldn't say assume, but we can be hopeful that that'll probably be the case here too. Um, 
what else can I talk about? Just that we do have high work volumes. Um, we have increased the queue lines for claimants to get through if they need. We've also um, really, really tried hard to make sure that the employer line is open, and that would be the 855-484-2636 number. Please listen to the prompts to make sure that you get to the appropriate area that you need. Um, we've done the best that we can to try to keep our claimants off our employer line so we can utilize and, and service our employer community. Uh, we understand you all have had to take a back seat uh, during this pandemic, and we are truly sorry to that. But honestly, we are our, our area with the Office of Employer Ombudsman is truly working hard with our tax office to try to meet your needs. Um, again, my email is dylanc at michigan.gov. Um, I do get a lot of emails through the day. I don't mind them because as I look at it, that email address belongs to the state of Michigan. And as you may know, I work and, and it's my job to make sure I service you. So unless you have other questions for me um, or um, who is our um, host here, he can jump in or she and, and let me know uh, what else um, is next. Uh, I don't want to jump ahead to Q&A if you already have it scheduled for a different time. Perfect. Carrie, thank you. Um, appreciate your public service. Uh, we all know how challenging a time it is right now uh, for everybody, but I know you uh, in your office in particular have been inundated. So thank you uh, for all the work that you're, uh, that you're doing. I, I definitely do want to open it to Q&A, but I do want to give um, our other presenters an opportunity uh, right now to jump on as well. Um, and then we can handle Q&A for everybody at the end, if that's, uh, if that's okay. So um, our next speakers, um, uh, I want to thank Emily Mara from the Genesee Shiawassee United Way for making the connection uh, uh, to this group, the uh, Disability Network. Uh, and I believe we have a couple of folks that have joined us today. I did hear Rachel earlier, and then I think Ludi, I believe, is going to join as well. But we wanted uh, to uh, take the opportunity to invite them onto this call. Uh, to introduce you to the Disability Network and who they are and what they're doing, and more specifically, what are the opportunities for partnership and collaboration uh, with them going forward? Because I think uh, they can be a very key uh, resource partner for uh, many businesses and organizations here in uh, Shiawassee County. So I uh, wanted to give them the floor uh, to be able to introduce themselves and talk about what they're working on, and um, we'll have... Uh, an opportunity for questions from them as well at the end. So um, I don't know who wants to start, Rachel or Ludi, um, but uh, the floor is yours. Good morning, this is Rachel Burdett Comer. I'm with Disability Network Capital Area, and I, I'm going to get started for us. So I'm a community resource specialist at our agency. Um, we're nonprofit. We assist people with disabilities. She's probably not up. And here, but um, I haven't. And then we serve Eaton, Ingham, Clinton, and Shiawassee counties. Um, and thank you again to Emily for inviting us to come on and for making that connection with Justin and with the SEDP. I appreciate it. Um, so I had invited Emily to be a part of um, a rural community mapping project and that's through university of montana and they work with um, people with disabilities and specifically centers for independent living um, that's what we are and we're one of 15 centers for independent living in the state of michigan and what their job is what their project is is to help other centers for independent living um, work with the rural communities and build that rapport and be able to provide the services um, we have an Owasso office out here in the Michigan Works Building in Suite 204, and I'm so proud of that because we've had a satellite office before and it just hasn't worked out. So we have two locations because we, we recognize that being in Lansing, centrally located, is not ideal for rural communities with transportation and other barriers. So I had gotten um, Emily Marr involved in this project, and I want to open it up for you guys. Um, if you're interested in helping us um, work on this project together. So we're identifying community resources and partners. And because of our amazing partnership with many um, nonprofits specifically, and then we're wanting to break into businesses and other aspects, we want to be able to um, 
kind of have a roadmap, so to speak, to help others in other states um, for centers to be able to have the kind of rapport that we have. So I'm so proud of that with our county. I grew up in Shiawassee County, so I thought it'd be easy to um, provide the services, but no, it, you know, with rural communities, you have to show that you're here and you're willing to do the work and prove, you know, with the rapport and the trust. So I'm proud that our agency has been successful in that respect. Um, so um, we're coming up with another meeting for the community mapping project, and that's going to be on the week of September 14th. So I can always kick out my email and, and my contact information um, to, to Justin, and then that can be kicked out to everybody if that's helpful. Um, but if you're interested in that, or if you're not, we are going to be doing a survey coming soon too. So be on the lookout for that. I can share that information. But I did want to introduce my coworker, Ludi Jones. Um, we do, we're embarking on new programming at our agency and we're super excited about that. She is a job developer for us. So I wanted to give her most of the time to be able to share those new things that we're doing with our agency. So Ludi, if you're on, go ahead. And if she, if you're on Ludi, uh, make sure you hit uh, star six uh, to unmute yourself. Oh, not, not sure she's on Rachel. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Sorry, I had to unmute myself again. No, I can go ahead. So with our agency, we we do a lot of different things. We help with um, youth transitions, which is helping with job readiness uh, for youth that have disabilities and, and showing them the different options. That's why we work really well with Michigan Works and we work with Michigan Rehabilitation Services as well. Um, and they have job developers, but one thing that we wanted to provide that's been a need is working with our already wonderful community partners, but then also providing that resource to this community. When I was on that call with Emily, she had mentioned, you know, the hardships of business owners realizing the potential for people with disabilities and that they can still work. They have, I have disabilities. It, it doesn't define you, it's just a part of you. So with our agency, we don't discriminate. Anybody that has a disability documented or not, we can assist with. Um, so one of the things that we help with is we help with job readiness. We also have an adult services portion of assisting with jobs, whether it's working with Michigan Rehabilitation Services or even on my end, I've helped individuals with resumes, even job searches, um, getting them connected to our community partners. And that's why I'm excited with Ludi to be on board because we're able to provide that um, more directly. So with that being said, um, I, I'm so passionate about our county as well as the others that we serve. And it frustrates me that there's a lack of education and community awareness about people with disabilities and instead of that stigma, which we know. Um, for instance, you know, there's some individuals that you automatically think they, they would just be kind of pigeonholed into like a cleaning position. Well, when I meet with a client, I talk to them, whether they're a kid or an adult, you know, I'm asking them questions about what do you like to do um, to get them interested. Hey, if you already like, let's say you love movies, you could work at the movie theater. Um, Let's say you really love food service, but maybe the cash register is overwhelming and that's not something you're really um, comfortable with. Why not running things or doing prep or, you know, there's different things that can be done. And, and that's part of what Ludi's job has been is to go and educate the business owners. Um, explain that there's job coaching available. Um, through MRS, there's Job in Jeopardy. So if somebody is at risk of losing their job, we can come alongside and help advocate and try to come up with a plan of action um, so that we can maybe ask for those accommodations or see if there's something that can be done or that they could still do their job in just a different way. So 
that's kind of the gist of it. I didn't want to take too much time, but I know in our county and everywhere else, um, I've just seen there's a lot of people with disabilities that want to work our county alone. And, and part of that rural community mapping project is pulling those statistics about the um, population that we have in our county specifically has a significant amount of disabilities varying in age. And we have a lot of individuals on staff um, that can attest. I mean, our agency, we have to have at least 51% of our staff having a disability and we have at least 80% that have a disability that actively work. Um, another thing to consider that we work on too is people are, are very scared of working again after they've already gotten on disability, SSDI or SSI. Um, we have benefit specialists on staff that can actually break it down to how many hours they can work a week without losing their benefits. So that's something else to think about too and that kind of puts them at ease. So those are some of those things that we can come alongside and assist with. Um, I could probably take the whole hour if I had to, but I don't want to. Um, but I can, I think I'm pretty much done. I'm ready for questions and I'm sure uh, Carrie is too. So I can mute myself or I don't know how this works. Do you want me to mute myself and then unmute? No, you're good, Rachel. And, and thank you. Okay. And, you, you know, I think this is very timely, and we've talked about it a lot on some of these previous calls. Um, the number one issue we're hearing from companies in Chiawassee County right now is, is talent, hiring. There are help wanted signs, now hiring signs everywhere, factories, restaurants, retail, uh, you name it. Everyone is looking, not everyone, many businesses are looking for people. Uh, and I look at this as another great resource, uh, resource a talent partner, uh, helping get people with disabilities back to work, uh, back into the uh, uh, to the employment pool. Um, and, and I'll be honest with you, I'm going to guess a lot of companies have never even thought about this as a possibility. Uh, so to have access to be able to connect uh, with those folks uh, through uh, the disability network, I think is huge. So I absolutely... Uh, not just on this call, uh, but in follow-up communications, I want to be able to connect more employers in Shiawassee County uh, to you so that they can get access and connect with these people, uh, because that is the number one pain point uh, we're hearing right now from companies is we need people. So thank you, Rachel, uh, for, uh, for all you're doing. And I know we're going to get some uh, follow-up information uh, from you that we will share uh, via email. Um, with that, I do have a number of other items I want to update you on, but um, to be respectful of Carrie from the UIA uh, and Rachel from the Disability Network, I want to open up the floor right now. Uh, we do have a big turnout today, bigger than normal, which is great. Uh, so um, in the interest of time, I wanted to give, uh, give our listeners, if you have questions on you, uh, unemployment, on work share, on anything else at the state level, if you have questions on uh, connecting uh, uh, with the Disability Network, now is the time. Uh, please hit star six on your phone, star six, uh, to unmute yourself and ask your question. Uh, does anyone have anything? Morning, Justin. I have one for Carrie. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, this is Mike Cross, a uh, local company called Retriever Solutions. Carrie, uh, the question I have is currently I have a team that's been furloughed. And upon that team and research, I've, I've gone through and looked at that I could bring members of my team back at any point to work certain hours. And so he's been claiming up until recent, we brought him back for four hours. He did four hours worth of work for us. And then when he went to go claim, um, he was unable to do so. And we've been having a difficult time trying to find out why. Uh, we've reached out to Ben Frederick, trying to see if his research contacts could get us in, uh, in touch with anybody at UIA to try to pinpoint why my employee was unable to claim two weeks. The only difference that we, that we know between anything is that I worked him four hours to the company and uh, we're kind of in a state of unknown. <laughs> But I have work that's available. I just don't have 40 hours of work for right this minute for the type of industry that we're in. So how can I uh, work on getting his claim resolved? 
Okay, so whenever an employer applies for work share and someone or the employee was on unemployment prior to that, the system will automatically close out the certification for the regular claim because you cannot collect on two programs at one time. So if your employee was on regular UI, you submitted the work share plan to begin, let's just say, what was this week, 823? then his regular claim would close effective 822. Now, if he was still entitled to unemployment for those weeks, he should be able to call through the Marvin and certify for those prior two weeks. Anything after, well, then it's up to the employer to certify. But the claimant is the one that has to call Marvin to certify those weeks. We can't do that. But if they do need assistance, then certainly we would guide them to the 866 500-0017, and I know a lot of you are probably sitting there saying, yeah, you know, they can't get through. So then if the employer emails through the WorkShare email at the UIA-WorkShare at Michigan.gov and says, hey, can you please assist my employees, you know, to get their um, regular UI benefits prior to WorkShare beginning, you know, we certainly can reach out to one of our benefit managers, which will then entail you know, calling that claimant to assist to get those workshare benefits or the regular benefits certified and paid. Maybe this is my ignorance, but uh, I didn't actually sign up for the workshare. I mean, it was only as of recent that we've had to furlough them to work. So and when I looked at the workshare, I, I couldn't apply for anything for that functionality unless I misread or mislooked at something. So we just let the employee uh, know he's furloughed. He went and claimed under regular UIA. Uh, he worked four hours and then that's what messed up. So did we do something wrong? No, you didn't do anything wrong. It might have just been something oh. that the claimant reported earnings and it might have triggered uh, an additional claim flag on the claim that may have uh, prevented him from being able to collect. Sorry about that. I got, I'm so involved with WorkShare. I'm, I'm just I'm in that program mode right now. Sorry about that. But no again, problem. if you have a question or you need someone that needs assistance, feel free to email me. I will communicate with one of our benefit managers and certainly they will work to assist to get that person taken care of. Not a problem. And if you wouldn't mind one more time, please, what was that email? It's Dylan, D-I-L-L-O-N-C at Michigan spelled out dot gov. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Mike. Other questions uh, for uh, Carrie or Rachel? Hi, Justin. Uh, Mike Gillette from Beechcraft. I have a question for Carrie. Sure. Morning, Mike. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, Carrie, I had an employee that I had uh, laid off during the COVID um, and I applied for the triple P money. I secured the triple P money. I did what I thought I was supposed to do. I pulled him off unemployment, or at least I notified of him, notified him of that. After the eight-week duration had expired, I brought all the employees back to work, uh, invited him back to work, never heard from him again. I've sent, uh, or I tried to contact UIA, and I've sent several emails to find out. I just got a sneaky suspicion that possibly he was double dipping, where he's okay. still receiving unemployment benefits as well as receiving triple P money from basically my company. Mm -hmm. So for something like that, then we would have wanted you to protest through your MyWAM account um, and advise the agency. This is something else I didn't really talk about, but when we implemented all the fraud tools to re-implement stronger tools, let me say it like that, in May, um, for some reason it kind of did a trigger where employers started getting charged on regular unemployment as well as work share benefits. And so we do have a technical team that are working on trying to fix this. So it, we're almost into 90 days trying to get it fixed without messing everything else up. And so I encourage employers when something like that happens to protest the monetary determination within the MyWAM account. Or, you know, if you're getting charged, also you can submit a charge through the view benefit charging credits, click on the current quarter that we're in or the quarter that you feel that you can look at and see his name because you're probably going to see some charges out there. 
Now those charges are all going to be reversed if they're all related to COVID. We are gonna eventually get those programmed and get them fixed up. So the employers will start getting credits to the account. But in the meantime, any employer you feel that you're looking at your MyWAM account and or you're getting the chargeable statements every week, certainly log in and protest immediately. Um, the gentleman that I'm speaking with, I did give out my email address. And if you'd want to email me to reach out, particularly about that employee, uh, certainly I can review that for you and, and get back with you. I right, thank you. I did uh, sign on to my WAM and I did protest and I tried to okay. do a live chat as, and I just have had no luck uh, okay. for any callback. I did, I did contact Ben Frederick's office and they tried to do the backdoor thing and filed a, a protest to claim too, as well. And it, it's probably been, I don't know, almost two months now. Okay. Yeah. The longer it goes but, on, the worse it gets, but certainly email and I will do the best to get back with you, you know, as soon as you do. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you, Mike. Um, other questions, comments uh, from anyone? Hit star six on your phone. I actually have one uh, in case anyone has any. Uh, I'll just uh, I'll just step in here. Um, so I was talking about this with our uh, team yesterday, uh, Carrie. Uh, this work share to me. Um, obviously, um, a lot of employers, I know quite a few locally that have taken advantage of it. Um, you know, with the $300 coming back, I guess, uh, I know we had the 600 that's gone $300 back. Um, is, is this something that I'm trying to figure out how I want to ask this. Employers are struggling to find talent right now. They're, they're not only struggling to bring people back, but they're struggling to attract people to come work. And there's no question that the unemployment benefit has an impact, uh, particularly at a lower wage scale position. Is this something that employers should be getting more aggressive on and trying to sign up for work share? Um, I, I just feel like it's something all employers should probably be doing as long as they're okay with working people at a lesser amount uh, and no more than 90%. I, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is should they, should we be as a community promoting it to our companies to encourage them to sign up more for it, not only from a bring your people back, but to attract people to come work for you standpoint? I guess that's what I'm asking. What are your thoughts on that? Well, as we know, the work share program has been designed to help employers during economic downtime. So right now we're in the pandemic. The, the state of Michigan is actually number one in the 50 states to pr promoting the work share uh, program. And the whole process of the program is to help employers if we're in the pandemic, as long as we remain in the pandemic and we're still not able to have business functioning at 100 percent and we're able to bring people back at reduced hours just so you're not having to lay off 100 percent and you're not having to hire new folks, then this may be a program that that is good for that, you know, for those employers. I can't sit on here and say, yeah, we're going to say um, in order to attract talent, invest in the work share program. You know, the work share plan was designed to help employers during an economic downtime or your own business downtime, you know, depending on the kind of work that you're in. But I, I assume you could probably look at it both ways. Um, it's whatever is best for your business to try to retain your own talent that you have. Right. So, you know, they're, they're still being financially compensated and, you know, without that hesitation to go look somewhere else or quit. Right. Right. Um, you know, and I, I've said this uh, actually the local TV station yesterday, I, we have hundreds and hundreds of job openings in this County right now. Many companies on the phone are hiring. Uh, and so, you know, to me, you know, and once again, I don't want to be crude on this, but the idea of being able to get people back to work because they would essentially be able to get a, a wage from their employer and get a subsidy here uh, from unemployment. I mean, it's it's a monetary compensation issue, I think, for a lot of people. So it seems to me like this is a tool more businesses need to look at, if only for that reason. So I don't know. I just wanted to throw that out there. And we are going to definitely, uh, I think, do more to try to promote work share, even though we do have good uh, good participation already, as you said. So, um, 
anyway, that's just my thought. Um, any other comments or questions for Carrie uh, or Rachel from the Disability Network? Um, uh, Rachel, can you let people know, um, Carrie's already uh, provided her email uh, and contact. Can you let people know the best way to get a hold of you? Sure. Um, the best way to get a hold of me is probably because a lot of us are working remotely right now, either by email. So it's R for debt, B as in boy, U, R, D as in dog, E, T, T, E, the at symbol, D as in dog, N as in Nancy, C as in cat, A as in apple, P as in Paul, dot org, or my work cell, which is 517-505-6900. Um, so that's the best way. And again, I just gave you a small snippet of what we can provide. There's a lot of other resources that we help clients with, especially if you have employees that are dealing with housing issues, um, their benefits, anything like that. If you get a hold of me, I can get you connected to the right um, place. There was one thing I, I meant to mention too during my presentation. Um, the job coaching and, and the different things that I mentioned Another part of our education is, is letting the employer know that that's not at a cost to them. Um, we can find other resources to provide those accommodations for the client or for that um, employee. So that's something else to consider too um, when taking on somebody that has different disabilities. So thanks again, Justin, for your time and for allowing us to, to speak today. Thank you, Rachel. And I think you're gonna send me some follow-up information uh... Uh, as well, which I'll email that out uh, uh, to the group. So uh, thank you, Carrie. Thank you, Rachel. I do have, and I know we're running a little behind on time here. Uh, I want to be respectful of everyone's time. I have a few other updates I did want to share um, with you. Um, and actually, uh, Rachel, this is something for you to be aware of. It could dovetail into your organization's efforts. Uh, one of our regional partners, the Detroit Regional Partnership, uh, you, you guys have heard me talk about them before. They are a business attraction group we work with, Shiawassee mm -hmm. counties included. Anyway, they are also working uh, with a group um, uh, specifically related to uh, autism uh, and the fact that many adults um, that have some form of autism are not in the workforce. And they have a, uh, a workforce uh business they're working with right now that specifically helps with placement into the IT field. Um, so things like, um, you know, software uh, development, cybersecurity, um, uh, you name it, anything that's related to computers and things like that, uh, they have um, uh, a partner that they're working with. It's a group called Auticon, I believe. Uh, so if any business um, wants to plug in with them, um, definitely, uh, or anybody else, quite honestly, uh, to maybe look at the opportunity to help placement for um, adults with uh, some form of autism. Uh, I think it's another wonderful opportunity uh, to help people get back to work and also fill a, uh, a, a big uh, talent need in our uh, business community. So I want to mention that. Uh, a couple of other updates. Uh, tomorrow at 1 p.m., uh, there is a webinar. Uh, I've sent out an email on this already to our list regarding how to finance child care facility development. So we've talked about it here before. Uh, we don't have enough of it here. Uh, we need more availability of it. So there's a webinar that's going to be held tomorrow at one talking about how to fund uh, development of that. So I will send out a reminder email on that today. Also tomorrow in the morning, our friends at PTAC uh, we had them on the call last week, Jasmine McKinney and Samantha Fountain. Uh, they are having a virtual meet the buyer event. Uh, so this would be for any business that would like to learn how to sell to the government. Uh, particularly now, you know, maybe you're trying to get customers or you lost some customers or, or downsized due to COVID. Um, the federal government is still buying, still spending money. So they're doing a virtual event tomorrow. Uh, on that. So I'd also sent out an email on that. That's from 9 to 12 uh, uh, tomorrow. Uh, and then three other things real quick. Um, the small business grant program, some of you have applied for that. Uh, we have finalized the Shiawassee County portion of that grant review. 
Uh, now it goes to the regional level. Um, we're waiting on other uh, partners across the I-69 Thumb region to complete their work. We are hoping for an announcement um, and a finalization of all that either at the end of this week or no later than early next week. For, so for those of you who applied uh, for the Small Business Restart Grants, uh, you will be hearing back very, very shortly uh, on that. So that that's coming up. Um, I want to recognize, and I did this uh, last week, we had Becky Dawkey on from Memorial. Um, they are now offering uh, a community conversations uh, program, a video program every week uh, now. I've sent out information on that via email. Uh, it's really informative, uh, talking about what our great local hospital, Memorial Healthcare, is doing. Uh, to uh, help uh, keep us uh, healthy and safe in the community. Uh, so I'd encourage you all to check that out. It's Memorial Healthcare Community Conversations. Uh, really, really great information. And one of the recent programs they talked about was they have drive up testing now uh, out at their facility on West M21 off of Chestnut Street. So uh, that's important for any employer to know if you have workers uh, that need to get a test, uh, they can go right there uh, and show up uh, at a drive through uh, and then the other thing I want to mention, and I've talked about this before, too, uh, thanks to our friends at the Small Business Development Center, uh, they have secured stimulus money to hire consultants actually in a number of fields. Um, and um, a couple that I wanted to note, uh, and I believe she, one of them is on the call today, uh, Emily Mara has been hired as a hospitality consultant available to help businesses in the hospitality field. Uh, restaurants, um, uh, other hospitality businesses, uh, if anyone needs help in those areas. Uh, and then also Mark Rideout, uh, who is available to help with human resource consulting. So once again, talent issues, companies on the phone trying to figure out how do I position myself to attract talent? How do I look at my compensation packages, things of that nature? Mark is available to provide those services to you for free. Uh, no charge. So um, that's something I think of great value. If you want to connect with Mark or if you want to connect with Emily, if you're a hospitality business, um, uh, let me know. Um, we're running late. I'm not going to jump into the other part, which we are going to, uh, we will start next week though. Um, for those of you who have been with us a long time, you know we have held monthly member coffees uh, usually Thursday mornings at eight o'clock, where we basically update everybody on what's going on in the local economy. Who's expanding, who's locating here, who's investing, uh, all that good stuff. Um, it's really meant to be a way for you to be more informed about the local economy. Um, and so we wanna begin to offer that on these calls in addition to just talking about tools and resources. So um, I, I don't wanna get into it today since it's already 9.42, but we will talk more next week. Um, and uh, just to keep you in the loop on what's happening around here, because things are really picking back up here. Uh, unemployment is dropping. Companies are hiring. Um, and so uh, th things are getting better here economically. So uh, with that, um, I will open the floor one last time. Uh, if there are any questions, uh, please hit star six on your phone. Anybody have any last minute questions or comments? Good morning, Justin. This is Emily. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, you're good. Wonderful. Um, so thank you for introducing me as the hospitality consultant. Uh, I do wear two hats. So I've had my company 180 Associates since 2017. Uh, I was in, became an S Corp upon joining United Way, which is my full time position still. Uh, last September, I became the relationship specialist here in Shiawassee County. So I appreciate you having Rachel on to talk about the rural mapping and making sure that we are as efficient as possible within our social service sector. And I do the same thing for my hospitality clients. So um, I look forward to reaching out to everybody interested in talking and, and having conversations on either United Way workplace campaigns or uh, how you can grow your business and build it to be as strong as possible. So thank you. Thanks, Ann. Uh, any other comments or questions from anybody? Okay, well, thank you, uh, Carrie, uh, Dylan. Thank you, Rachel. Uh, appreciate your time, uh, everybody, today. Uh, and get a hold of us if you need anything else. Thank you.